Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are headed out on the water. The buyer's guides are over. It's time to go fishing. I am pumped to be getting back on the water today. I've had a blast with the buyer's guides. Tim and I enjoy doing that for you guys because you enjoy it so much but we love fishing and we've been missing it. I have not been out on my home pond for a few weeks because we've been doing those videos every single day. So today we're going exploring. I'm expecting that the bite should still be pretty good. I like our conditions. We've got some overcast that should break up a little bit later. We've got everything from A-rigs to crankbaits to chatterbaits, maybe even a last ditch shot at topwater. I don't know. I have no idea what to expect. Let's go fishing. Throwing the tactical micro. <laughs> I'll take that. Welcome back to the water, huh? Throwing that bladed tactical micro with those the Damiki armor sheds on there. It is such a deadly, deadly rig. little guy but we'll take him so i'll be honest with you you know when you're away from the lake for a little bit and you come back things aren't always what you expect right i've thrown a lipless and a chatterbait and a square bill a lot this morning i caught that first really good one on the rig i missed three or four more so i thought well maybe they just don't quite want the rig today i'll try other things turns out they really want the rig compared to everything else seems to be a super shut down day but i don't care about that we're gonna power through it we're gonna find them let's keep chucking They're getting smaller. We uh, we definitely need to adapt. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> A frogfish. And he massacred it. That is not the one two punch I expected today A rig and frog. Uh, it's not so far out of the wheelhouse, however, that I didn't have a frog rod in the boat. So I was expecting, again, I haven't been out for a while. I was expecting things to be quite a bit further along. Uh, and it's maybe they are, it's hard for me to tell. You know, we started off strong and then it just started collapsing after that. 
fish weren't where I was expecting, fish were short striking. This year, you know, we got caught with some floodwaters in the fall that really muddied up the lakes, the whole Tennessee River system got a lot more stained than normal. And as a result, the grass really got shredded during that process. So there's not a lot of grass for the fish to even be in. And we've talked about this before. Most of the country grass is out of the equation now, but that Tennessee River will hold grass. In some cases, it'll hold it all the way through winter. Uh, although that's really rare, but most of our grass is gone. But as I was looking around today, it wasn't feeling right. So I ran to a patch of grass and I saw some activity and I thought, you know, I started digging around the boat and sure enough, I've got a frog rod with me. I've been at it for about 10 minutes. I had one short strike it and it looked like a big fish. And then I just caught that one. Uh, I've caught them this late in the season before. Uh, I catch them into December sometimes but it's hit and miss. Some years it never happens, other years it does, but I try to keep the gear around just in case. But I'll tell you what, coming out of all those buyer's guides, if I had to pick a way to get a bite, a frog would definitely be up there. Let's keep going. was bottom hopping the lipless as much as I would like to throw a frog all day long I didn't think that was gonna keep happening that was just an awesome thing but I'll take that lipless fish right there nomad swim tricks nice one what's he got he's got a hook stuck in the top of his lip I'm gonna get that out of there for him Thank you, my friend. We're definitely working for him today. Sometimes when you've been off the water for a little while, that's just the way it goes, right? You don't just land right on them. We've caught a handful of fish today. We've caught them all different ways, you know? A handful on the micro rig, but I mean, a frogfish, a lipless fish, right? Just random stuff. Hopefully this evening, will settle into a pattern. I'm gonna spend some more time with the lipless and the rig will adapt if we need to, but hopefully we can get into them. We can wrap it up strong. I've been looking forward to getting back out. I've been looking forward to power fishing. And that's how I plan to finish it. Lost one on the cast before. Let's pick that little guy up. We might be onto something. Oh, and he's off. That's all right. That was a one pounder, but. Here's the deal, I'm throwing that Jackal TN60. I'm also throwing that Nomad, the Swimtrex Max. The Nomad, I was bottom hopping. The way that Tim and I, the main way that we throw a lipless, right? But these fish, they're coming on either a straight retrieve or I'm reeling and then a pause, reel, pause. So this thing's rattling and then starts to free fall and that's when they catch it. Every single one of them, I don't even feel the bite. It's right on the pause. And then as soon as I pull tight, they're on there. It's really an interesting cadence. Little one. Oh, 
yellow bass. It's actually a pretty big yellow. right at that exact same moment, right when I drop that rod and let that bait flutter, they're on it. It's pretty fun. We finally got a consistent pattern of some kind that we're able to repeat. Switched back over to that Swim Tracks Max. Got another one. That is such a fun pattern, burning and pausing that lipless. So what I'm doing is just real pause, real pause, real pause. And on some of those pauses, they just clobber that thing. At first I wasn't feeling the bites. It would just be on the slack line and they'd tag it. Now I've had three or four they hit it really hard on the slack, and I felt them just dong, just clobber that thing. Such a cool bite. Got him. Way up there shallow. The Tennessee River is known for bites like this. Dirt shallow, doesn't matter how cold it gets, especially after the drawdown happens in the fall. That's what exposes all the grass. That's why we have a late season frog bite here. But once that water draws down and these big mud flats get shallow, it's crazy. How fish, how shallow these fish will get, and they'll stay up there. Some of them got them. Some of them will stay up there almost the whole winter. It's really wild. Parts of the fishery, oh, a little tiny fish. Parts of the fishery will behave normally. You know, fish will get way out deep, get on outside structure, things like that. But there's always a group of really shallow fish. Try that again. Golly, instantly, did you see that? Awesome. This is the sort of pattern we were looking for all day. Come here, buddy. Look where that lipless is. Down the hatch. Head first, swallowed. Wonder if we could throw up there, get another one. Let's find out. I had to catch one bottom hopping like we normally do. I switched back over to that TN60. And that guy smoked it. <laughs> All right. We better end it on that one. I need to get back home. Guys, this was really, really fun. Coming off the heels of the buyer's guides, not having a clue what was going on out here, just coming out, 
putting in a little time and piecing it together with you guys. Catching them on the lipless, catching them on the rig, catching one on a frog. That was awesome. I'll tell you what, every year you've got to catch a last topwater fish, right? Usually you don't know when it was, but I'll tell you, a frog fish this late in the season, I'm pretty sure you guys were there at least for my last frog fish, but probably my last top water fish of the season. That was pretty fun. I'll link everything in the video description that I was using. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.